Hello, I'm uh, Jaap van Aar, I'm editor of uh, Rheumatology and I welcome Dr. Ed Roddy from Kiel University, who is the lead author of the new BSR Gout Guidelines. I think a very important um, guideline. Um, one of the questions I had is, you know, was it really necessary to upgrade the 2007 guidelines? Okay, so well, thanks for raising that. There's a number yeah. of important reasons why we need a, a new guideline. So there's been various epidemiological studies published since the last guideline showing that gout is becoming more common. Mm -hmm. Not only is it becoming more common, it's becoming more severe. Mm -hmm. And yet despite this increase in prevalence, increase in incidence and increase in severity, mm -hmm. we know that gout is still poorly managed. So there's been no improvement in treatment mm -hmm. since the last guideline. Other important reasons are that we're also starting now to better understand the reasons why people are so poorly managed. And it's become clear that the lack of adequate, high quality information and education mm -hmm. for patients is a key barrier. Yeah. And then a final reason is that since the last guideline we've had new drugs become available in the UK which weren't included in the last guideline. Right. So what would you think or say is the, uh, the, the newest element in this new guideline? Okay. Well I think there are two really important changes. Mm -hmm. The first important change is that we should consider and offer urate lowering therapy to all patients at diagnosis. So even should, those who just had one attack? Yes, so we shouldn't be waiting right. for people to develop uh, troublesome chronic recurrent right. symptoms. We should offer it all, to all patients at the mm -hmm. diagnosis. There's several reasons for that. Mm -hmm. The first reason is that although traditionally we thought of gout as an mm -hmm. acute episodic condition, mm -hmm. actually we should be that there's a paradigm shift where we mm -hmm. should now be considering it as a chronic inflammatory arthritis. Right. We know that patients frequently have crystal deposition before their first attack, mm -hmm. and we know that patients very commonly have subclinical synovitis persisting between attacks. Right. And we know that the vast majority of people go on to have a second attack. Mm -hmm. It's actually relatively uncommon only to ever have mm -hmm. an attack. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, 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 that really is, I think, a paradigm shift. It in, is. In, in, there will be in many practices. Um, you, you mentioned the importance of uh, patient education. I mean, it sounds obvious, but um, um, apparently that's not being implemented in, in kind of daily life clinical practice, right? No, that's right. So, I mean, you're quite right. Clearly, we should offer high quality information education yeah. to all of our patients, yeah. no matter what their diagnosis yeah. is. But research published since the gas, since the last guideline, mm -hmm. has highlighted that lack of provision of such high quality information is a barrier mm -hmm. to patients receiving high quality care. And therefore, in the new guideline, mm -hmm. pervasive across all aspects of the management of yeah. the app, whether that's acute attacks, lifestyle modification, or use of your eight lowering drugs, is a requirement to educate and inform our patients properly to allow them to make informed treatment decisions. Right. And, and how about educating GPs? Is there a room for that as well, or is that a too sensitive topic? No, well, I, I think. We have to remember that gout is poorly managed. Yes. It's not just GPs though, yes. actually. It's not well managed by rheumatologists or other hospital specialists. Yes. Okay. So I think a key uh, element to dissemination mm. and implementation of the guideline will be disseminating the message mm. and educating GPs and other healthcare practitioners yes. about the new guideline and the new recommendations for treatment. Right. Um, lastly, you mentioned that um, there are new drugs on the market. Yes. Could, could you expand on that? Yeah, so um, shortly after the publication of the new uh, guideline in uh, 2008, uh, Fabuxostat mm -hmm. was licensed and, and approved by NICE mm -hmm. um, as an alternative in patients who fail to tolerate or have contraindications to allopurinol. Mm -hmm. So I think Fabuxostat is quite widely used now, and that's the main new drug that we have available. There are other mm. new drugs in development, and uh, there's a, a drug called Lazinurad, which affects excretion mm. of uric acid by the kidney, which is currently being replaced by NICE. So right. we wait to see what their verdict will be. Right. Okay, well, thank you very much. I, I think this guideline is, is of great importance for all practicing rheumatologists, so I encourage all the readers of the journal to read a small print of this uh, latest guideline on gout. Thank you very much, Dr. Wally. It's a pleasure. Thank you.